judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. This would be the time when we would normally have the children's message. You get to make a choice. You want to hear the children's message? Sure? I don't hear a resounding affirmative in that. All right. This is just a precursor of what the message will be. So, ponder this verse with me. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. Tell me something. Did Jesus always do the right thing? If he didn't always do the right thing, then how could we call him sinless? Mary certainly thinks he did the wrong thing, didn't she? If he disobeyed his father and mother, that's a commandment, right? That would be sin. That'd be a problem. He stayed behind and he didn't exactly have their permission to do so. Their idea was for him to follow them back towards Nazareth. Keep in mind there's no cell phones, right? So he can't call and say, hey mom, I stayed behind. Perhaps we can find the answer in Jesus' answer. Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? In whose house? Huh? I thought his father was Joseph, and Joseph's house was in Nazareth. But here lies the answer, isn't it? Jesus had Joseph, who was his earthly father, was kind of like a stepfather, someone that the Lord had put in place to watch over him. But he had a heavenly father. Was that Heavenly Father watching over him even when Mary and Joseph had left? Yes. He must be in his father's house. And this is a really strict translation from the Greek. A better one is he must be about his father's business. And that's why Jesus came, wasn't it? To be about his father's business. Which would eventually include his going to the cross, dying our death, and rising again to forgive our sins. Growing up, did you always obey your parents? I didn't. We're supposed to, aren't we? But for all the times that you and I disobeyed our parents and you kids at home for all the times you do, Jesus came to forgive all of those times of disobedience because he loves you so very much. And he stayed behind in Jerusalem so that we might know. He, for all intents and purposes, appeared to be an ordinary little boy. But he was much more than that. God incarnate, our Savior. Please join me in prayer and you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we pray that we would know you as both a human being and as God incarnate. And as God incarnate. We, pray we pray that you would help us, would help us to, always to always obey our moms and dads and those that watch over us and that you would continue to protect us, protect us. from doing wrong and you would show us what is right. And remind us that when we do wrong, we have forgiveness through faith in you. In your name we pray.
We continue on now with our sermon hymn. 